Hello and welcome to another complete OCR GCSE PE lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 5.2 diet and nutrition. As always we'll be following the OCR syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 5.2 you need to know a definition of the term balanced diet, the nutritional components of a balanced diet and to understand the effect of diet and hydration on energy use in physical activity. Before we begin, I'd really appreciate it if you take a moment to click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be notified when the next topic is uploaded. Also, a quick disclaimer, this video is certainly not dietary advice. I'm simply covering what's included in the OCR syllabus so that you can score marks on exam questions. So, a balanced diet is one that contains suitable proportions of carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals and water necessary to maintain good health. The term balanced diet also refers to matching energy expenditure with energy intake, which allows a stable body weight to be maintained and ensures enough energy is available for exercise, growth, repair and a wide range of other bodily processes. Taking in more energy than you expend over time results in fat accumulation and eventually obesity. The primary measurement of obesity is body mass index or BMI, which is calculated by dividing an individual's weight in kilograms by their height in meters squared. Next, you need to know about the different nutrients or components of a balanced diet, including their applications for sports performance. So carbohydrates are the sugars, starches and fibers found in fruits, grains and vegetables. They typically make up a big portion of the diet and their main role is to provide the body with energy. They're broken down through digestion into simple sugars like fructose and glucose, which is converted into usable energy or ATP via aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Any excess glucose is converted into a molecule called glycogen and stored in the muscles and liver. If fuel becomes scarce or energy demands rise, this glycogen can be broken down into glucose and metabolized. Athletes who might benefit from consuming large quantities of carbohydrates include endurance athletes like triathletes and marathon runners who rely on stored glycogen to provide them with energy during the latter stages of a race. To maximize glycogen stores, a technique called carbohydrate loading is often used, which involves severely restricting carb consumption for several days before switching to a high carb diet in the final two to three days before competition. Even with carb loading, however, glycogen stores may still run out, forcing performers to supplement with glucose gels, sports drinks, or a small quantity of fruit during competition. Carbohydrate-rich foods include starchy root vegetables, bread, rice, pasta, fruit, pulses, breakfast cereals, and anything containing sugar. Proteins are known as the building blocks for body tissue and are essential for growth and repair. Proteins typically make up around 15% of our dietary intake and are broken down into smaller molecules called amino acids. These amino acids are used to repair damaged muscle cells, meaning protein is particularly important for recovery after an intense training session or competition. Protein consumption also aids hypertrophy or muscle growth and is therefore a priority for athletes like sprinters, rugby players and weightlifters who rely on attributes like power, speed and strength. Protein sources include meat, dairy products, beans, eggs, fish and nuts. Fat is a major source of fuel for athletes performing low-intensity endurance exercise, as it can be used to produce energy via aerobic respiration. It's a key component of all cell membranes, allows us to absorb fat-soluble vitamins, protects the vital organs, and assists in insulating the body. Fat is highly calorific at 9 calories per gram, meaning excess consumption could lead to weight gain. Good sources of fat include meat, eggs, oily fish, nuts, olive oil, butter, cream, avocados, coconut oil, and full-fat natural yogurt. Vitamins are non-caloric chemical compounds that are needed by the body in small quantities. They are found in abundance in red meat, organ meats like liver and kidneys, eggs, and various fruits and vegetables. Vitamins play a key role in energy production and metabolic health, immune function and the prevention of disease, wound healing and hormone regulation. Minerals are calorie-free inorganic elements that are essential for a number of bodily processes including muscle contraction, bone regeneration and the transmission of nerve impulses. 
Macro minerals are needed in relatively large quantities and include sodium, potassium and calcium, which is important for bone health and can be found in dairy products and green vegetables. Micro minerals are needed in very small quantities and include zinc, manganese and iron, which is an essential component of haemoglobin, which carries oxygen in the blood. Minerals are lost through sweating, which has clear implications for those who exercise. Fibre is the indigestible substance found in fruits, vegetables, pulses and whole grains. Getting plenty of dietary fibre may help to improve digestion and gut health, so it's an important consideration regardless of your exercise habits. The final nutrient is water, which has a number of important functions. It assists in removing waste products from the body, helps to regulate body temperature through sweating, and is the main component of blood, making it responsible for transporting oxygen and other nutrients to the body's tissues. Having a well thought out hydration strategy is particularly important for those competing over long durations or in the heat, as dehydration can lead to a reduction in blood flow, fatigue, and the inability to regulate body temperature. Athletes should be fully hydrated before an event, drink small quantities frequently throughout, and continue drinking afterwards to rehydrate the body and to help it to recover. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on the final topic in the syllabus, topic 5.2, diet and nutrition. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions relating to the content, and if you benefited from these videos, please like, subscribe and share.